Hello everybody and welcome to Inside China Auto. Today on the channel we have our first returnee brand. That brand is Xpeng and this is the P5. It's their third model. It's the world's first production car with LiDAR built in and it's a direct competitor for the Tesla Model 3 and the Neo ET5. So I guess the only question we have to answer today is, can it compete with those two prestigious rivals? Let's find out. Okay, so as usual, let's start with the styling. And it's fair to say the P5 does divide opinion on its styling. It looks kind of a little bit torpedo-like in its design and certainly different from its rivals, the Model 3 and the ET5. There are a few factors that affect that. The first one being that the P5 goes with more of a three box profile, the traditional saloon style profile. So you get a box here at the back for your trunk, your passenger compartment and your bonnet, whereas the Model 3 and the ET5 tend to slope off towards the back and have more of a coupe-like roof line. That's called a two-box design. Now, the three-box design and the slim look here is enhanced by the fact that you've got a black roof line there and a black strip here along the bottom as well, which really squeezes the kind of the coloured area of the car, which makes it look a little bit slimmer. And that's probably to hide the fact that this car is nine centimetres taller than a Model 3. So it is pretty much bigger in every dimension except the wheelbase, which is shorter. That shorter wheelbase means that you get pretty big overhangs here at the front and also at the rear. So a few things going against the P5 in terms of its styling there. At the front here, you have your traditional Xpeng lightsaber style lights that kind of cut off down here. It's certainly an EV style profile, very smooth, very rounded. Down here, this triangular shape is home to the LiDAR technology. You've got another one on the other side. And there's quite a lot of chrome on this car as well. You get chrome along the bottom here, chrome along the bottom there, a long strip along the side that kind of swells a little bit in this area by the D-pillar here to make it look a little bit different. And of course, you've also got these indented wheel arches, which is a little bit different from other cars. Very, very smooth profiling on the side, very rounded, flush door handles, and a slight indentation that just cuts down towards the rear there. Okay, so here at the rear, you can very clearly see what I was talking about in terms of that three box profile. You very much get a saloon style rear on this. Maybe not as square, maybe not as long as something like a 5 Series or an E-Class, for example, but certainly longer than you'll get on an ET5 or a Model 3, even with that quite rakish roof line coming down the back. Definitely a saloon. In the corners here for the lights, you get the X-style design on both sides, connected, of course, by this lightsaber across the middle. You get your X-Pong lettering, same as on a P7, as well as this sort of swollen edge here and the black plastic down the bottom. You also get a reflection on the back corner here, a triangle reflector, which reflects the triangle shape that you have at the front that stores the LiDAR. So as I mentioned, it is a saloon and you open that by lifting the hatch here. Thankfully, this is lighter than that on the P7. And you get a reasonable sized opening here, 440 liters worth of space in there. There's a bit of extra space under the boot floor as well. You get a 12V socket in there, 180 watts, so you can do vehicle to load, but you will need an adapter because it's not a traditional style plug. Now, one thing I do need to tell you is that this car does not have folding seats. So if you're in Europe and you particularly like taking large objects or doing DIY, this car is not going to be for you. There is a hatch through the middle, so you can put skis through there, for example, or some long pieces of wood, but you cannot fold the seats down. That's a bit of a miss, I have to say, in terms of Europe. But in Europe, they do offer a roof rack, so you can customize the car and use it that way if you like. But decent sized boot, it's all right for China and not the worst looking car, certainly better looking in person than in photographs, but you know, you'll decide that for yourselves. Let's have a look on the inside. Okay, so here inside the P5 is really where the premium level starts to step up a little bit and come more to the fore. You get a lot of really good materials in here. Nappa leather all over on these really quite beautifully sculpted seats with big bolsters, nice designs, nice styling. And you also get these airline style headrests with the wings that can fold around your head as well. You also get Nappa leather here across the top of the dashboard, along the center console, on the armrest, and in the middle part of the door. 
you get a bit of fake wood on there. It is fake, but it does uplift, does lift the interior up quite a bit. You've also got a little bit of gloss pla plastic on here on this little drawer above the wireless charger, which is angled towards you, and these two cup holders. You get a sort of a springy material on top of the dash, pretty good material up there, but you do get cheaper, harder plastic at the bottom, but it's not tinny, which is at least a bonus. Of course, the main feature in this interior here is this huge 15.6 inch portrait style screen. It works really quick. It runs with XSmart 3.0, that's Xpong's own system. Really well developed. It's easy to find all of your functions in there. Along the bottom here, you've got your car options, a parking option, your air conditioning units, and your vents for the windows. Up at the top, you've got maps, music, phone, camera. No internal camera on this one, like you get in a lot of Chinese cars, which is interesting, but you can record your journey. You've got settings, and you've also got in here an app store where you can download additional apps for the car, including for things like karaoke, and even for looking coffee, so you can order your coffee while you're in the car. So that works really well. Now, there are a couple of features which are not so great. So the steering wheel is all right, it's nice to hold, but the problem is it's only adjustable for rake. It's not adjustable for reach. And to be honest, on a car of this premium level, that is unforgivable. To be honest, I would definitely want to have a car that has reach adjustment on it as well. So I hope that Xpong do something about that in the future. In terms of the driving position, you only get forwards and backwards, up and down, and of course the angle here, you don't get lumbar support. Again, another loss in a car that should be quite premium. And actually on this side, you don't even get the up and down adjustment. So you basically sat at the height that you're at no matter what. Those for me are key things that really should be in a car of this level. The steering wheel itself though is fairly simple. A three button affair on each side and two roller wheels. You use this one for the volume and this one can be used either to turn up your ventilation, which is nice to have on the steering wheel, or if you're in NGP mode or adaptive cruise control, you can adjust the speed with that. But it does feel quite premium. It's very comfortable. It's a nice place to spend a lot of time in. You also get a massive glove box down there, which is really good. And you can probably see this here. This is a fragrance unit. So actually these individual pods provide different fragrances and you can choose to, so when you put it back in here, it comes up on the screen. You can turn on the fragrance and get sort of a, a really nice perfume inside the car. Three different flavors come in different names. That's a quite a premium feature that you often get in Mercedes-Benz, for example, much like your drive selector, which is straight out of Mercedes-Benz, that's up there on the right side. You've also got an eight sound, eight speaker sound system in the car here. So you get two in the doors in the front, two in the back, you get two in the B pillar, and also two little tweeters up on the top of the, top of the dash. It's an adequate sound system. It's not something fancy. You can't get any DIN audio or high-end names like that in the P5, but it's, it's pretty decent as a sound system. As with a lot of electric cars, you get a little bit of space under here. In the cubby hole in the middle, you get two USB sockets, pretty deep. You can fit a bottle of drink in there and you also get a 12V socket in there. That 12V socket can be used to pump up the mattress in this car. So in another video, I'm gonna show you about the sleep pack that you can get with the P5. The P5 was developed over COVID and in China, as well as in many other countries around the world, this sort of promoted the need for people to go outside and have a vehicle that could be used for various functions. Now, why Xpong chose to do it on a saloon, I'm not entirely sure because obviously you tend to do more of that in an SUV. Nevertheless, they come up with two interesting features. So one of them is the sleep feature. So these chairs, at the touch of a button on the screen here, take the headrests out, they will fold flat and create a flat load area within the car. You then get a pretty big unit that I've got in the back. It's a blow up mattress that will blow up around the middle here so you can sleep inside your car. There's also another function which allows you to remove the center headrest in the rear, plug in a projector that sits on the back shelf and you take out your sun visors, fold them to the side and you get a projector screen. I believe it's 46 inch projector screen that hangs here. So you can sit in the back of your car and watch movies. That's really cool. But yeah, check out our sleep package video because we're gonna do a separate one about that. The only other main feature here to talk about is the panoramic roof. It's pretty big at one and a half square meters. That's a lot of light into the cabin. And the benefit of this one is it does come with a sunshade as well, which of course you can activate in the system. Okay, so climbing into the rear of the P5, 
you can see what I was talking about in terms of the massive amounts of space in here. Look at that leg room. I mean, it must be at least a meter from the seat base to the back of the front chairs. And they're exactly in the position that I would be in whilst I'm driving. Whilst there's not huge amounts of space underneath them, you can get your toes under there. Cushion is slightly short as in most cars, but I wouldn't say you're gonna be uncomfortable in the back of this car. A Little bit tighter on headroom, especially if you have a tall haircut like I have today, but it's certainly a quite a luxurious place to be with this soft leather, comfy seats. As I said, you get speakers in the B pillar and the door, big door pockets here. Three pockets there on the back of the chair. You get twin vents. You can't change the temperature, but you can change the direction. You get also a USB and a USB-C socket down there. Strangely, there's a USB-C socket here, but not in the center cubby. Not sure why that is. You do get an armrest as well with twin cup holders in there. And this hat folds down. You can spec a little fridge in there. So if you want to cool your drinks down on a trip, you can spec the fridge and have a, have a cool area in the car but I don't know how many people actually take that. But it does feel light, feels airy, certainly comfortable, possibly one of the best places to be in the P5. Okay, so out here on the road is probably where the P5 does its best work, if I'm being honest, because it's just a very comfortable cruiser. It doesn't try and pretend to be a sports car. I mean, for a start, it's front wheel drive. You only get and one option of motor on this car, which is a 155 kilowatt motor on the front that's about 208 horsepower and it has 310 newton meters of torque but it's it's very much a family car it reminds me actually a lot of the uh, Vauxhall Cavalier we used to have when I was younger same kind of body dynamics but it's it's soft but not overly so it doesn't have bad body roll handles corners quite pleasantly of course with that electric drivetrain it's very smooth very comfortable really is a good place to while away long hours behind the wheel if you need to. You get quite a lot of customization in the system as well. So if I go into the menu, which is down here in the bottom left, I have the choice of comfort, eco and sports. If I go into eco, you do feel immediately the pressure is lifted a little bit from the motors. Everything becomes a little bit softer. If you change it into sport, not only do you get the sound effect, but once you're driving and you have the wheels under load, you find that the car instantly becomes a bit more zippy, it becomes ready, and the throttle response becomes a lot more aggressive. This car will do 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds, so it's not rapid quick, but it certainly feels very agile on the go. The steering is actually pretty good, and you can change the adjustment of that as well. So again, in my settings menu here, I can change the regeneration of the battery, from high to low and of course there's a middle option there as well and I can change the steering so currently we've got it in the most aggressive steering and that actually firms it up quite nicely you get a lot more feel it feels a lot heavier a lot more uh, engaging to drive you can take it right down to soft and it becomes you know you can move it with your little finger really really simple so there's actually quite a bit of customization in there there's another button in here which is called X pedal if I click on that and press go again you get that sound effect now this one isn't quite as responsive not as zippy as the sport mode but what it will do is lift up that braking regeneration to one pedal driving style levels now it's not complete one pedal driving because it will not come to a complete stop you have to do the final bit of braking yourself if you're at traffic lights but it does become more of a, a one-stop shop. And within this mode, you can change your steering back to sport, which becomes a bit heavier. And it genuinely does make a difference compared to the other two options. There's also a model here for comfort driving. So if I click on that one, select that, X pedal goes off, everything's smoothed down, goes into comfort mode. And what that literally does is changes all the settings so that everything becomes more comfortable. It kind of takes all of the braking regeneration off so you don't get any sort of pull when you decelerate with the car or lift off the accelerator, steering becomes, actually the steering stays the same, I'm still in sport mode, but everything just becomes a lot more comfortable. It's really nice to cruise through the mountains with this mode on, it's very comfortable indeed. Okay, now one thing we haven't talked about yet is that this car comes with X-Pilot 3.5. Actually, it comes with 3.0, you have to pay a little bit more for 3.5, but with those two LiDAR units, that makes this the most advanced X-Pong currently on the road, apart from the G9, which is coming very soon, may already just have been launched 
before this video comes out. So that LiDAR means that you get a suite of advanced driving assistance systems. The most basic of those is adaptive cruise control. You don't have to pass a test to use adaptive cruise control. You can simply pull the handle down twice over there. That will then give you the option to, you can change with the button on the steering wheel here, the distance to the car in front, and it will go up to a certain speed that you set with the rocker wheel on the left side here. That doesn't keep you in the middle of your lane. In order to use the lane centering control, which is another option, you do have to pass a little test. So you activate it in the system, you have to scan a QR code, use the Xpeng app, learn what you can and can't do with lane centering control. And then once you've answered a few questions, it then becomes activated in your car. In addition to that, you then get navigation guided pilot. And again, that's the most advanced one currently on sale here in the P5. Navigation guided pilot is pretty much like FSD, but currently it only works on the highway. So city NGP will be available on this car, but they're currently sort of working through that and trialing it in certain areas. Xpong have made a video of that themselves that you can watch with their chairman. But you can use highway navigated pilot with this car. And there's a separate video coming out on this channel to show you how that works. But that essentially, again, you have to pass a test in the system and to activate it, a little icon will come up on your screen. First of all, you've got to set a location in the maps. So you need to say that I'm going from here to there. And then when you become, when you get into an eligible place to activate that, a little steering wheel icon will come up on the system with a sort of a highway road. You pull down on this handle here twice and it will then enter navigated pilot. And what that will then do is stick inside the middle of the lane. It will follow the car in front. It will go up to the speed limit that it sees on the road. It will make automatic overtakes by itself. You can also indicate if you want to have the car overtake by itself in either direction, left or right. And it will even pull into gaps. It's a little bit cautious when pulling into gaps. It wants to make sure there's exactly the right amount of space to allow it to do that but it will pull into gaps and when it's time for you to come off the highway, it will pull you to the side and then drive you onto the off ramp and then it will bing and tell you that you need to retake control of the car. And it actually works really well in practice. But again, you can look at our other video to see how that works. I won't go into too much detail with that. Now, in terms of the dimensions of this car, we did talk about how it's longer than a Tesla Model 3, but has a shorter wheelbase, so length is just over 4.8 meters and width wise it's 1.84 meters wide and 1.52 meters tall so it is nine centimeters taller than a model 3 i think it's about three centimeters taller than a et5 and the wheelbase is 2.768 meters so in terms of battery packs on the p5 you get three different sizes of battery pack get a 55.9 kilowatt hour battery, a 66.2 kilowatt hour battery, and the largest is a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery. They will give you 460, 550, and 600 kilometers of range, respectively, and Xpon conveniently labels their cars as 460, 550, and 600, so you know exactly what you're getting. That means you'll get 285 miles on the smallest pack and up to 373 miles on the largest pack. So a pretty decent range actually for an electric car. How does that look in terms of pricing? Well, the base model of 460 will come in at 177,900 RMB or about $25,500. The 550s or the 550p that we're in will go up to about 225,900 RMB or $32,500. And the highest model, the 600, comes in at 249,900 RMB or about 35 and a bit thousand dollars. So actually it's a really good value car. You get a lot of stuff in here, very premium feel. Yet yeah, it might have different looks from a Model 3. It might have a different kind of performance with it being front wheel drive rather than rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. But as a family car, it has all the space and all the features that you'll need and of course you get the added flexibility of being able to buy the sleep pack if you want to go camping in the car or the cinema pack if you want to have a little home cinema in your car for weekends out. In terms of overall cabin ambience, it's an electric car so it's quiet. I think it's a lot quieter than the P7 
out on the motorway it certainly doesn't feel as intrusive sound wise you didn't get that additional noise that we had on our p7 it really is pleasant it, it soaks up bumps very comfortably we just drove over a grid then a little bit of uncomfortable road it's very very comfortable you, you have, will have no issues here no crashing over bumps except for super large speed bumps for example it really is it's comfortable comfortable and pleasant is exactly how i would describe the p5 honestly i was a little bit concerned at the start that i might have some issues with the p5 i was disappointed with the lack of reach adjustment and the lack of lumbar adjustment but the car has grown on me considerably as an enjoyable car to drive Okay, so at the start of this video, we asked the question, can the P5 compete with the all-conquering Model 3 and the upcoming Neo ET5? Now, of course, no one's driven the ET5, so we can't really compare, but the Model 3 is a known entity, at least. In reality, I think they're only being compared because they're both electric, they're both premium, and they're roughly in the same size category. However, I do think they're aimed at different audiences. That starts with the P5 being front-wheel drive. It's front-wheel drive, of course, because it's on David's uh, Xpong's David platform, which is a front wheel drive platform. I do suspect when they make the P5 again in future, they'll make it rear wheel drive like the P7. Being rear wheel drive, of course, gives the Model 3 more of a dynamic performance orientation, whereas the front wheel drive on the P5 makes it more family and comfort oriented. And that is really where this car excels. And of course, you get the option of that sleep pack inside as well as the cinema pack. Now, I do think you get more legroom in the back of the P5 than you get in a Model 3. I think you get slightly less headroom because the Model 3 has that panoramic roof coming further back in the car. Of course, both of them come with some level of self-driving as well. Xpong comes with the navigation guided pilot, currently only for the highway, but they do have city functionality, which is coming, courtesy of the fact that this car has LiDAR units in it, which the Model 3 does not. Of course, there are questions over FSD, but both of them in reality work very well. In terms of price, these cars are on very different level anyway. The Xpong P5 is considerably cheaper than the Model 3, and that's really, I think, where it comes into its own because it's, it's almost like an entry level into premium luxury motoring. You get great materials inside, very comfort oriented, comfortable seats, Nappa leather everywhere. You get that huge screen in the middle, and yes, it's portrait oriented, but you get Xsmart 3.0 in there, which work, works really quickly. So you've got all that digital connectivity that you might want in this car, as well as those additional functions. Performance wise, it is enjoyable to drive. It's very comfortable. You'll have no problem if you're driving this car, unless you want to be super sporty. But I really do think that the P5 stands upon its own two legs as a really good, lower level premium car. Of course, there are some little hitches in there like the reach adjustability on the steering wheel, which I really think it needs. And the fact that you can't fold the seats flat, but it's got tons of space in there, all the connectivity. It's actually a really good car and excellent for the price.